actually did a beginner's class not that long ago, maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. And one of the things I had mentioned in that class and what I tried to encourage the beginners was to look for games that inspire them, okay? And even as a chess grandmaster today, uh, and been there, done that, seen it all, I still run across games that inspire me. And I would like to share one of my discoveries with you. Uh, one of my favorite uh, bloggers, uh, chess bloggers, is a fellow uh, from Canada. His name is Grandmaster Kevin Spraggett. So Kevin Spraggett on chess uh, blog. And he uh, lives in Portugal. And he plays in the Portuguese Chess League as well as the Spanish Chess League. And on his blog, he presented this game that was played between two gentlemen. I'm going to get their names wrong. Uh, Grandmaster uh, Lebezuski was white and Grandmaster Edward Romain uh, from France was black. And like I say, you know, this is just a fun, inspiring game, and I wanted to share it with our class this evening. So, E4, C5, a Sicilian, an open Sicilian happen. And please feel free to, to ask any questions. Uh, this, of course, in the Sicilian, there's tons and tons of variations. This, of course, A7, A6 is known as the Nidorf defense. Uh, made popular by its namesake, Miguel Nidorf. A6, and there's lots and lots of moves for white here. White has played bishop g5 as one of the main moves. Bobby Fischer favorite move was uh, bishop uh, c4, what I call the Fischer variation. Other people have played g3, h3, rook g1 with the idea of g4, and, and of course f4. f4 is also a very important move. So lots and lots of choices. Um, white played bishop e3, what is known as the English attack. So bishop uh, e3, e5, and again, all of these moves are I'm not going to say standard, but theoretically well known. They're in books, and l and lots of players have played uh, like this. Now here, White makes a kind of a, a tricky little move. He plays this little move H3. So White's idea is that he wants to first of all stop the move Knight G4, but also get ready to expand on the king side. White reasons that if he could play g4, g5, kick this knight away, then this knight could land on the attractive square d5. All right. h3 is not the most popular move in that position. Knight d7, g4, and we see the game unfolding as follows. Now with this move, rook c8, one of the things that in Sicilians that's very, very common is for black to sacrifice an exchange for this knight on c3, doubling white's pawns, and then if black's knight could clip this pawn, then for a very, very minimal material loss, uh, black usually gets an excellent game. So that's a standard Sicilian sacrifice. What Alexander Yermolinsky might say, every Russian schoolboy knows. Uh, queen d2, stopping the sacrifice. h6, to slow down white's uh, desired advance. Castles, b5, f4. And now the game is already getting a little bit wild. Bishop e7. Uh, black, if he wanted to, could have tried b Four, a new variation, uh, knight d5, knight takes e4, but may have felt that even though he won, that let's say black has won a pawn, black might not be so happy. His king is still stuck in the center, and after, for example, a move like queen g2, attacking the knight, 
White has ideas like bishop takes a6, winning back as pawn, ideas like f4, f5, trying to force the trade of that bishop on e6. And it, in, in essence, Black felt the move b4 was too dangerous. Also, I should point out, pardon me, that also after b4, knight e4, White could also, if he wants, play queen takes b4, attacking this knight on e4, which is why Black played bishop e7. Yes. King b1, pawn takes, bishop takes, knight e5, and the game is still unfolding. Nothing inspiring yet. Queen g2. Knight d7, knight d5, takes, bishop here, bishop here, bishop here. So far, seem, things seem okay for black, and he reasons that he has a really great knight uh, sitting there in the middle of the board on e5. But if we stop and think about the position for a second, that's really basically the only thing that's really great about Black's position, and it is very good. White, on the other hand, has a lot of uh, ideas. One is if we could if we could put a knight on c6, this would be a very very good square, and that is what White in fact does. He plays knight d4 with a dual purpose idea of both knight c6 as well as knight f5. So. Although I'm not 100% sure what black has done wrong, already I much prefer white's position. g6 to defend the square I just mentioned, f5. White plays h4, rook c5, bishop g2, queen f6, g5, takes, takes, Rook takes h1, rook takes h1, queen g7, rook h4, king d8, queen h3. And here's where the fun begins. In fact, black has been severely outplayed, and it's very clear that white is in fact threatening to play rook invasion to h7, trapping the black queen and winning on the spot. So that's like threat number one. Another idea for white, obviously, as I mentioned a moment ago, is to bring his knight to c6. That would be check. And black has been outplayed. So black feels that the best defense is a strong offense. And he plays the move knight to c4, making preparing to meet the rook invasion, rook h7, with queen takes d4. White th sees through that uh, clever little trick and plays queen c3, threatening a discovered check against black's king and winning black's queen. Any questions thus far? It's all very straightforward. Okay, good. Knight e5. White plays knight c6 check, reasoning that black cannot capture with the knight because that will cost him his queen. So the knight is now in a pin. He w doesn't want to capture with his rook because that would simply cost him an exchange and probably the game. Black played king c7. And now, as White's looking at the position, and he's saying, hey, man, look at your rook on c5. Isn't it trapped? Boom! b4. Game over. Care to sign the score sheet? Uh, White is winning. Black says, well, before I resign, I'd first like to play this move. Whoa! Where did that move come from? Holy cow! Wait a minute. 
if white now takes the queen, he's checkmated. He has checkmated. Check, king, check, king, check, king. And this rook that was trapped says, let me get in the last laugh. Let me just get in that last little laugh there. Oh, boy. So can you imagine White's absolute shock when this move knight d3 was played? But White regained his calm, and he says, OK, I've got to keep this square a3 under protection of my queen. It's clear I can't capture my the black's queen. If white's queen moves anywhere, I also have to keep in mind knight d2 check. So white played a fantastic move, knight d4, just retreating the queen and says, hey, you know, deep breath. Your, your rook is still trapped. I'm winning. Everything's OK. And black said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. How about queen e5? Whoa, queen e5. Holy cow. Now what's going on? <laughs> um, let's see what happened. Pawn takes the rook. Took the rook. Aren't I just a rook up? B4. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Let me go into a huddle again. OK, I can't take this knight because of checkmate. I can't take this knight because of checkmate uh, once again. Uh, I can't keep the queen, the e1 square protected with my queen. White has to come up with a great idea as well. White sees that he could move his knight with check. Pawn takes, queen takes, but then black has a perpetual check with his two knights. Do you see the perpetual check? So white's trying to win the game, and white played knight e6 check. And unfortunately, the game ended as a draw anyway. Very inspiring, right? But one of the th one of the th one of the discoveries that was made afterwards was that White could have won. White could have won in this position. How on earth could White have won the game? The crazy part was. That White had a miracle win, an absolutely miracle win. C takes d6. King b7. Push the pawn. <laughs> Let's just see. Uh, so. Uh, knight a3 check is actually black's best move. We'll come to this in just a second. We'll go back, don't worry. <coughs> White takes, takes. And this is an incredible situation where just thanks to one single check, the bishop on g2 wins the game thanks to this move. Check. That's so wild because black's king has no square that it can move. If black's king moves to b6, we promote with check. If black's king moves to a7, we play knight c6 check, capture the queen, and make a queen ourselves. So let's just go back a sec. So now we kind of understand what the heck is going on. <laughs> Uh, king b7, d7. So if you take, pardon me, if you take the queen right away, yep, d6 check. <laughs> just, 
a check along this whole diagonal. You've got two knights, a queen, and you're absolutely nailed. The white bishop is a monster. Um, the problem from Black's point of view is Black wants to move his king in such a way so that after his queen gets taken, you'll have a perpetual check, pardon me, a perpetual check like this. So Black wants to play this move, allowing a check. Now he can't move to the light squares because then he walks into uh, a discover check. Now after this move, Black would be very, very happy if White were to capture his queen because then he's got the perpetual check that he needs to make a draw. But, but instead of capturing the queen, White goes queen himself. Check. Is this wild or what? I mean, isn't this just like an amazing game? Yeah, definitely. If you go king up the board, you got check. If the king comes up the board, we've got a check. And then our next move is to take black's queen or give check mate. So we go back, back, back. So now we go check, king here push, knight a3 check. This is black's best chance. Now in this position, white cannot capture the knight because of a back rank check down here. And it's black who wins. See that one? Ooh. So white moves his king. Check, king, check. Now instead of acquiescing to a draw, now that white uh, pawn on c2 is missing, it gives him the opportunity <laughs> to take the knight. Now here, after check, Variation. King comes here. Um, nothing has changed. White still is intending to make a queen, uh, to make a, pardon me, discover check, forcing black into onto the b6 square so that we could promote with check. We could take the bishop if we're black. We can go. Here, oops, sorry, that was a <laughs> not there, that wasn't what we wanted. This one, override, take, and take the queen, anticipating that we'll be able to take the bishop in case of check. But at this moment, because black has given up his entire army, we can just queen and win the game. So let's just go back and recap for a second. So when we reach this position, after the move queen h3, we understood black had been completely outplayed and white had the advantage. And then this absolutely stunning move, knight d3, that's like, ooh, and ah, and whoo. Uh, you know, because of that checkmate that I showed with the rook. Check, 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 rook mate in case we take the queen. This great retort, knight d4. Um, this fantastic move, queen e5. And here there was another uh, mating problem. Let's see what it was. If we play, if we take the knight, how can black win? Discover check. 
check check wait <laughs> so in this position you can't take the knight that was why white took the rook and then this wild move b fought before ooh and ah and this is the moment where white uh, <laughs> bailed out. I look for inspiring games, and uh, I just, uh, this was, again, it is played in a Spanish league. Nobody, I mean, this game would have easily been overlooked in the great current of modern chess affairs. And again, you know, a shout out to Kevin Spraggett for coming up with this gem and sharing it with his readers. <laughs> <laughs>